అమ్మో నువ్వు సంతోషంగా ఉన్నావా ఆయన నన్ను బానే చూసుకుంటున్నారమ్మా ఇంకోసారి పిచ్చివాగుడు ఆగితే ఈసారి తలుపు కూడా తీయని చెప్తున్నా హలో ఎవ్రీవాన్ దిస్ ఇస్ సౌందర్య ఆది ముతు ఫ్రమ్ ద క్వింట్ ఇన్ యు ఆర్ లిస్నింగ్ టు డు ఐ లైక్ ఇట్ అ క్వింట్ ప్రొడక్షన్ వేర్ వి రివ్యూ ఎనీథింగ్ అండ్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ అండర్ ద సన్ అండ్ ఇన్ దిస్ ఎపిసోడ్ ఐ విల్ టెల్ యు డు ఐ లైక్ ఐశ్వర్య లక్ష్మి స్టార్ అమ్ము ఇన్ లైఫ్ థింగ్స్ హ్యాపెన్ అండ్ ఈవెన్ ఇఫ్ నథింగ్స్ హ్యాపెనింగ్ దట్ స్టిల్ సంథింగ్ హ్యాపెనింగ్ రైట్ So on this show we talk about things that happen. We get an esteemed panel of highly jobless people to answer the million dollar question. Do I like it? Do you know that one of the most common romantic nicknames for a woman in a relationship is Ammu? I know you all know that I'm single. Then how did I get access to this information? Okay, don't ask because then I'll have to confess that I randomly listened to some random couples conversations. I know it sounds bad, but it's not like I'm curious to know about their personal conversations and stuff. It's just that their mouths chatter when my ears are around. Like it's the value of Indian rupees it's not reducing. It's just that the US dollars is strengthening or something that I read on the news recently. Okay, before we get into the review of Ammu, here's a quick reminder. Hit subscribe to the Quince YouTube channel and follow us on all podcast streaming platforms. Let me list out a few films. Tappad starring Tapsi Pannu, Jio Baby's The Great Indian Kitchen, Darling starring Alia Bhatt, and now Aishwarya Lakshmi's Ammu. What do you think one could infer from films like these? Of course they are all themed on domestic abuse yes but what more women across the country irrespective of their caste class or creed are being subject to domestic violence and most importantly it is so relevant even in today's times like literally in the 21st century so what is the story of ammu which is currently streaming on amazon prime video all about so basically it revolves around a very simple and a happy girl you know she is full of love and life and you know she doesn't have very big dreams or she is not very ambitious and to be honest we literally don't know what ammu does like before her marriage we we have no clue if she studied or if she worked somewhere no we don't have any information about it and i think it's a conscious decision in a way uh, from the makers that they don't really want to reveal any uh, you know big details about her because she only did not have anything uh, you know charted out for her in life she just wanted to get married uh, she just wanted to start a life uh, you know be be a wife and her parents arrange her marriage uh, with their neighbor ravi which is played by navin chandra the film opens with a scene where she kind of lights candles in a very dimly lit room you know it kind of symbolizes her hope for a very bright future with her husband or something but what she doesn't realize is that all of that will quickly extinguish and push her into darkness ammu perfectly kind of captures the complexity of abusive relationships you know how the abusers use manipulative devices to you know make the victims doubt themselves for what was wrong in the relationship and this essence is what ammu is all about See Amu's family is kind of supportive but at the same time a little out of reach also like they give us this context because they want to set things clear that she feels hopeless in her marriage even when she's trying to seek help you know for instance her parents and in-laws you know they brim with pride that Amu and Ravi opted for an arranged marriage and they didn't disgrace the family by choosing you know love marriage they didn't choose their partners on their own so apparently it's a shame if your uh, fully grown adult children uh, if they choose a partner for themselves apparently yeah you know amu's mother also says she wants her daughter to be you know submissive to her husband just to ensure that the couple you know have this happy marriage and i think these are indicators of very poor support systems that amu is forced to live with uh, you know and hence Amu kind of takes on this solo journey a very tiring journey where she realizes that if she doesn't stand up for herself no one else is going to because everybody around her is always questioning her like what did you do wrong like why don't you be submissive like what was the mistake from your end there is this parallel storyline with a prisoner on parole uh, Prabhu played by a uh, national award winner Bobby Simha and his character was more or less like ammu it is very intelligently placed i believe because both of them try to escape uh, you know ravi's egotistical like toxic masculinity because ravi as a cop he tries to be dominant he tries to 
control Prabhu's life and Ravi as a husband does the same to Ammu. There are so many powerful set pieces, you know, that stand out and leave a lasting impact. I mean, the sequences where Ammu kind of, uh, you know, shares her ordeal, like how her abusive husband is being uh, such a pain. That scene is like very, very important scene. And there is this confrontation scene where Prabhu and Ravi are, uh, you know, fighting and that demonstrates ego clash. And there is this conversation between Ammu and Prabhu. And that kind of serves like a moment of realization, you know, how one should respond to abuse. And I think all of these scenes, like they collectively show brilliance of the makers. Like they they just say all the right things in the film. Another fascinating aspect is how the relationship arcs like developed over the course of the film. Uh, you know, Prabhu, uh, he has a sister and uh, she kind of avoids talking to him because of a mistake that he did, but he very much regrets it till day. However, on the contrary, there is this Ravi, uh, who is this abusive husband, who is never guilty of his mistakes, but he is automatically, you know, forgiven by Ammu, even without him asking for it. And it just gets interesting to watch the tables turn as we progress through the film. Ashwara Lakshmi, who was recently, uh, you know, producing Gargi, which was one of the most unique films uh, when it comes to talking about sexual abuse. I really, I thoroughly loved that film. And, uh, you know, uh, we recently saw her as Pungurali in Pony in Selvan. And now with Amu, man, she is just stunning in this film. You know, the way she portrays the suffocation, uh, you know, of being a domestic abuse survivor was just so realistic. And there is specifically, uh, you know, uh, mirror shots like where she uh, uses makeup and fake smile to camouflage the bruises on her face and heart. And that was damn too painful to watch. Another brilliant performance that I really loved from the film is Naveen Chandra. He is just terrific as Ravi. You know, his character shows this kind of a brilliant shade uh, of dark grey and not like very pitch black. You know, he starts out as a very progressive man. He's very concerned about women's safety. Uh, you know, he, as a cop, he does everything in his, uh, you know, capacity to ensure that the women in his city, uh, or in his region, like they, they, they are safe and stuff like that. But then he slowly turns into a sexist and, you know, shows his true colors. But what didn't feel like quite convincing is that the transition of Ravi from a lovable, you know, romantic husband to an abusive husband just felt slightly abrupt. Amu kind of represents a woman you know in your life. She is the one, uh, you know, who's silenced by abuse. And, and at many times, she chooses to silence herself for the sake of love. And also what's very important is that Amu fights back. It was so beautiful to see that Ammu was being vulnerable, but at the same time, she was mustering up that courage to be fierce. And the best thing about Ammu is, apart from Charukesh's compelling story and engaging narration, I think it's the dialogues. There are so many memorable dialogues. I mean, it's like a deadly concoction of pain, power and humor. So after all this talk, do I like Ammu? Definitely, I love Ammu. Uh, but I don't really love the fact that she has to, you know, put up with such you know, terrible times with her abusive husband. But but yeah, I really love the film for its honesty, for for the way it portrayed, you know, not trying to be melodramatic, but at the same time not, you know, trying to dilute uh, the film with, you know, crass humor. I mean, the film was just very sensitive in the way it dealt with the topic. And yeah, that brings us to the end of this episode of Do I Like It? Follow us on Instagram at The Quint and tell us what you want us to talk about next week. And check out our website, thequint.com, for more groundbreaking reports and videos. This was Soundarya Adimutu, and I'll see you in the next one. Do I Like It is a Quint original podcast hosted by Soundarya Adimutu, executive produced by Shelly Valya and Ritu Kapoor, produced by Anjali Palod, edited by Pratik Liddu, uses audio from Amu. The music from BMG Production Music. You were listening to the Quinn's podcast.